Hello guys, welcome to Physics Grad. In this video, we are going to start our discussion on the Legendre transform. And this part is go mainly going to focus on the intuition behind what exactly this Legendre transform is doing. Okay. And before I begin, uh, I would like to say that uh, to un completely understand this video, you need to know uh, the concepts which has been taught in one of my previous videos and which is titled maths in the maths playlist lecture 4 the envelope equations okay so please watch this video before you start uh, with this one because uh, it explains how you can uh, calculate the equation of an envelope for a family of curves okay and that is a important thing to understand in order to uh, get the intuition behind what the legendre transform is doing okay all right so having said that let us begin so what what is the meaning when we say we are performing some kind of a transformation okay so let us look into that first so transformations transformations helps us helps us to look at things from a different perspective okay and sometimes makes the problem easier to solve okay so transformation is basically a procedure which takes us from one perspective to another and both of these perspectives uh, describe the same thing okay it will become more clear when i give you some examples all right now i say that sometimes it makes the problem easier to solve how how does it make it easier to solve how it does so by introducing okay so because sometimes they introduce some symmetries symmetries which were not not obvious obvious initially okay so when we go from one perspective to another sometimes we will uh, see the for uh, uh, introduction of some new kind of symmetry which was not obviously visible in our first perspective and that is how transformations help us to make the solution of a problem easier okay so let us take some familiar examples okay familiar examples so these familiar examples include let's say uh, the transformation from cartesian coordinate system to spherical coordinate system okay so cartesian to spherical coordinate system so here we notice that usually these coordinate systems are used to describe the position of different particles of a system okay and the cartesian coordinates uses the three perpendicular axis which we are all familiar with and the spherical coordinates uses the radius and uh, azimuthal angle and uh, the angle theta okay both of them will describe the exact same thing which is the position of various particles but in a different way okay 
So this is basically going from f of x, y, z to f of r theta phi or r phi theta, r phi theta. Okay. Another familiar example would be the Fourier transform. Fourier transform, wherein we uh, go from, for example, a signal in the time domain to the frequency domain. Okay. So, in both of these cases, we are describing the same thing. Okay. So, both represent the same thing okay and what is that thing for example it can be a signal okay but this particular representation is in a sense abstract representation whereas this is a real representation what i mean by this is that this particular quantity, if you consider this to be a signal, can be measured using some kind of sensors. Whereas this is a mathematic is a result of some mathematical operation on this quantity. Okay, you cannot make a sensor which will uh, give you the uh, Fourier transform of a radio signal, for instance. Okay, I'm not saying it's impossible, but in general. Okay. So, how do we get the Fourier transform in reality? We basically measure the signal the, in the time domain and then apply a mathematical operation on that data to get the Fourier transform. Okay. But the important thing to notice is that both of these representation or uh, both of these uh, perspectives give the same information and that is the information regarding the behavior of the signal okay so i hope by now you know or you get a feel for what a transformation is and how it is useful and why it is needed okay so now moving further let us consider okay so similarly Similarly, consider a convex function, okay, a convex function, convex function f of x can be described, can be described equally well, equally well in two ways, okay. So, what are these two ways? What are these? Okay. So before we go into that, I have to define what do we mean by a convex function. Okay. So convex function implies that the second derivative of the function is always greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Now, of course, there is a more rigorous definition for what this convex function means but for our sake of understanding if we know this it is enough okay so what is the consequence of this the consequence of the second derivative being always greater than or equal to zero is the following so if we have some function okay like this and the second derivative says that the curvature of the function is always in this form in the sense that if I draw a line which intersects the function in two points okay then this line is always going to lie above the function so when I say above if I give a random uh, curve of a function then this region is the region above the function and this region is the region below the function okay and for a convex function the consequence of this condition is that if i draw a line which intersects a convex function in two points the line 
the part of the line between the point of intersection is always going to lie above the function okay so let me uh, write that down the consequence of this is that consequence the curvature curvature of f of x is such that a line intersecting intersecting any two points of f of x will always lie above f of x okay and some examples will make it more clear so example if you have f of x equal to x square then this function as we all know is a parabola in this fashion this is a convex function convex function because f double dash of x which is equal to uh, f dash of 2x which is 2 is greater than or equal to 0 that is this condition is satisfied therefore it's a convex function and if you look at it in this manner if I so this will be the region above the function and this will be the region below the function and if I draw any line in this fashion it intersects the curve in two points and this part of the line is lying above the function and therefore it is convex so what is an example for a function that is not convex so f of x equal to minus x square then this will look something like this correct now the region above the function would be this and the region below the function would be this and if I draw a line intersecting uh, two points like this okay then this is lying below the function and therefore this is not convex and going by this condition going by this condition we see here that f double dash of x is f dash of minus 2x equal to minus 2 which is less than 0 okay so this condition is not satisfied and therefore this is not a convex function okay so with that i hope that you understand what is the meaning of a convex function okay so let us proceed so i had told you that there are two ways of describing this function that is a convex function okay so the two ways ways of describing a convex function f of x are as follows so the first way is to represent the function using all the points given by the coordinates x comma f of x in the x y plane this is nothing but the curve representing f of x okay so this corresponds to y equal to f of x so if i have uh, y axis and x axis and i choose one particular value of x and i substitute it in f of x i will get some number and that will be my y coordinate so let's say it comes here okay and i do that for all the x values and i will get some curve like this okay so this is one way of representing the convex function and the other way is to represent it in terms of family of lines okay so family of lines which has f of x as its envelope okay so what do i mean by this so if we have our y and x axis and this 
is our first representation this is the first representation then the what the second representation says is the following i can represent this white curve as an envelope of these family of lines what are these family of lines these are basically the tangents to this curve at every point okay okay so if you consider these infinitely many lines which are tangents to y equal to f of x curve then the y equal to f of x curve is nothing but the envelope of this family of tangents okay so we see that so this is the second representation okay and f of x is the envelope of our lines family of lines also f of x is the y coordinate of the curve y equal to f of x so this is our first representation and this is our second representation and both of them give or represent the same thing which is f of x okay and our next natural question so before that both represent represent the same thing which is f of x okay now the big question is uh, is it possible is it possible to go from 1 to 2 can we go from the representation in the form of 1 to the representation in the form of 2 or vice versa and the answer to this is yes and this is done using the legendre transform legendre transform okay so what is our conclusion just like we have for example the transformation from cartesian to spherical coordinates or our fourier transform which is basically transforming our perspective in the same way if i give you a convex function you are able to describe the function from two different perspectives which are by using the family of lines whose envelope is the function required or a set of points whose y coordinates is equal to the value of f of x okay so these two forms the different perspective and intuitively what the legendre transform does is takes us from one of this perspective to the other okay just like how the fourier transform takes us from time domain to the frequency domain the legendre transform is going to take us from these sets of points to these sets of lines okay so our legendre transform takes us from 1 to 2 and as we will see it all it can also take from 2 to 1 okay so the mathematical formulation of this legendre transform will be the topic of discussion for our next video and this is where i would like to end this particular video thank you for watching see you next time